I learned more about what's happening on the border listening to you talk for five minutes than I have reading news articles for the last five years. And so um, I'm, let me show this video that you did, um, and then we'll talk about it, okay? Okay. This is a two hey, everybody. I'm at the border wall around Yuma, Arizona. It's about 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, we've watched about 150 people come across. You can see the end of the wall down there. And we've watched about 150 people come across in the last hour. The first group were about uh, 50 or 60 people from Africa, from West Africa. This group that is filing behind me right now, we interviewed many of them. Uh, they're from Peru, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, India, China, Tibet, Nepal, and uh, all together, uh, people have come across right here from 117 nations in the last couple of years. In three years, in total, 7 million people have come across the border illegally into our country. And from here, they're put on these buses and they're brought to the border patrol station where they're processed. After four or five days, they're released on their own reconnaissance into our country and most of them are never seen or heard from again and this the stories that we heard from these people are absolutely heartbreaking this is a humanitarian crisis because of the understanding across the globe that we now have an open border here there are people being drawn here uh, they're being abused uh, there are, there's all kinds of just horrific a terrible, terrible stories, and this is not a good thing for our country. It's not a good thing for these people, and it is unsustainable. So, why? Tell me, why are there people from Nepal? Why? So, I've heard you talk about this, and it blew my mind. Tell people what, how those people are getting there, who's enticing them to come. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, it took me. Um, three days down there to really understand what's happening at this point when I made this, this I didn't even understand the full impact of, of how crazy it is because, you know, I said they were these people after, after they come across and, you know, the, many of them have, have been terribly abused. We talked to people. Um, there's, there's a tree that you can, that is visible during daylight from this wall called the rape tree where the, where the cartels extract the final payment from women when they, before they come across. Um, and they, uh, you know, the, what, what happens to children at the border, uh, the disappearances and, uh, it, it's just, it's, it's, uh, the people are extorted, they're exploited, they're robbed, they're beaten, they're raped. And, uh, and so that's part of the issue. The other part of the issue is that they come across, and they're they're not released. They're they're not released just on their own reconnaissance. They're brought through to the border patrol, and the border patrol then process them. They fingerprint them so that if they're if they have a criminal record, then they something else happens to them. They're diverted to another, you know, to a holding facility. But if you don't have a criminal record, you are asked what city you want to go to. And whatever city you want, if you don't have the money, and many of them don't have any money, if you don't have the money to get there, um the uh uh the the Department of Homeland Security will pay for your plane ticket. So you're brought to the airport and buses, and you're put on a plane to whatever destination you want to in the country. And uh, you know it's a crazy system. And they, they they're, you know, they're landing in New York and in Minneapolis, and they're uh, creating big burdens on the social service systems in those cities. Now, the re the way it's happening, and this is the the worst part. The, the border patrol is utterly demoralized. You know, they we met with patrol. We met with many of them. And they said, you know, we're not defending the border anymore. We're just processing people who are walking across and coming in. Nine of them have committed suicide in the uh, last couple of years because of, you know, they're, they're utterly just demoralized. The, um, 
the, the cartels are now running everything at the border. So they, and what, what the cartels have uh, TikToks that you can look up and YouTube videos to show what you need to do to get into the United States. And you pay either ten or $15,000 to the cartels. You fly from countries all over the world. Those, the groups that we saw all together that night, you know, by the end of the night, we'd seen, I think, about 300 people come across. And there were only two families from Latin America, Central America. I thought all these people were going to be from uh, El Salvador and Me Nicaragua too. and Panama and Costa Rica and, but they, and Mexico. But no, they're all from countries. And they're not. Uh, what, what countries? Well, I, I said they're the countries. I interviewed everybody on that line that night. Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, um, Uzbekistan. Uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Nepal. a lot of them from China, Nepal, Tibet, and then every country in West Africa. No, I didn't. No one knows this. No, no it, one knows. Everybody thinks it's Mexicans. It's not Mexican. It's not Central Americans, Mexicans. It's people from everywhere. And this the is, reason is, the cartels are advertising across the globe. And here's what you do: you get on a airplane to Mexico City. And then you get your visa in Mexico City. The cartel helps you do it. So a domestic visa in Mexico. And then you fly to uh, Mexicali. And in Mexicali, they have a parking lot that's filled with these big white buses. Each bus carries 55 people. And you get off that local plane and you go board the bus. And the cartels then bring you to the border and you walk across. So we could watch the, the buses emptying out on the other side. And what the Border Patrol tells us is that they time the invasions of all of these people with um, the, you know, the Ill illegal immigrants. They time that with, um, with illegal crossings, undetected crossings elsewhere along the border. So if they want to bring in bad people, whether it's drug smugglers or terrorists or enforcers, because what happens is they rob these people before they cross. And the people can't pay their final payments. And so the, the cartels then plant them in jobs in Los Angeles or, you know, wherever. But they then have people who have to come across. The people the, the, the people who come across are now indentured servants of the cartels. And they're working off their payment in the American cities. So they have groups of, of gangsters from the cartels who come across or bad people who can't afford to get caught because they do have criminal records and they have to smuggle them across they come across somewhere else while all these big pile of people are coming across them through the gaps in the, in the wall that's where they bring the fentanyl through and all of the other bad stuff that they're doing but they do it they first distract the border patrol by making them all go uh, that's, that's the fence. so they so we now have the cartels who are running our immigration policy wow. in this country and they're bringing you know, in three years, seven million people have come across illegally. During that same period, 3.1 million people came across legally. So those are the people who actually got in line, who went through the process. They're people who, you know, we've mm -hmm. made a determination that they fill some need for our country. That it's important for our country to have them here. And, um, and meanwhile, you know, the cartels are, are bringing twice as many with no screening across and you know a, a nation no nation can survive with a unless it controls its borders it's part of the responsibility of being a nation and and even more concerning is the humanitarian crisis this is causing in cities across america as um as these immigrants land in those cities with no means and no legal way of making a living and they land in the hospital. Let me just give you an example. I visited the Yuma Hospital. I spent a day at the Yuma Hospital and with, the, with the nicest people. These are like salt of the earth, all American people. And I met with the head of the hospital, and he said, last year we spent $27 million, this little hospital unreimbursed by anybody, our own money, $27 million caring for illegal, illegal migrants. And he said, we treat them the same way with the same priority as local people. 
And he said, last year, there was a three-week period when we had 35, on average, 35 immigrant women in our maternity ward having children. And we were not able to, we had to turn away local people who had scheduled uh, uh, inductions, you know, birth inductions, mm -hmm. inducements, right? So people who are coming in for cesarean sections or some other kind of, um, you know, in, in, induction. And these are local people who live in the community, pay taxes in the community, pay that hospital's expenses, and they are not able to get treatment because the hospital is so overloaded with migrants. And that is happening in Yuma. It's happening all across this country. Uh, because, you know, we're bringing in 7 million people who have no legal status. So how would you fix it? It's, that is the, the, well, that's the good news, you know, is that it's easy to fix. Um, and, you know, and I'm giving why doesn't you, So how would you do it and why, doesn't, why isn't Biden well, doing well, it right now? I, don't, I cannot answer why Biden isn't doing it right now. I cannot answer that question. I, I, I saw some things at the border that are inexplicable to me, and one of them is, and, and this may explain why Mayorkas was, doesn't want to give me Secret Service protection because I was very vocal at criticizing him because the Border Patrol told us this. They said that when the Biden administration came in, there were certain, I, listen, I, don't, I was always against Trump's wall. Okay, but now I understand that there are actually places where you need the wall. You don't need a 2,200 mile wall from Brownsville, uh, Texas to San Diego. But in the populated areas, you definitely need a, a barrier like this because otherwise there's no control. But in the underpopulated areas, which is most of that area, you can do it with, uh, with remote censoring equipment, mounted cameras, towers, uh, soil detectors, all of these, you know, th these detection um, uh, paradigms and surveillance systems. And those were purchased. Many of the towers were erected with video cameras on them. When the Biden administration came in, according to the Border Patrol, they were removed. The cameras were removed. I can't explain why. <laughs> then there were gaps in the fence that I saw. Okay, and um, the Border Patrol was begging Mallorca's, and he came down there, you got it. Uh, close these gaps. There's only, there's about six or eight big gaps in the fence, but easy to close. And they already had bought all the material. Oh, on the ground next to the fence, there's a staging areas with tens of millions of dollars of the wall on the ground there that just hasn't been put in place. And so Mallorca's does this, which is me, you know, insane um, and petty which is he says, we're not going to use Trump's material. Oh, no. We're going to put up our own wall. He, he agreed to do it because he saw what was happening. And he said, we're going to put up our own wall. So they bought new material that is different, and it, it looks like a chain link fence, a different color, and it's, it's not like what you see behind me in that, that picture, that, you know, that very solid structure. It's kind of a see-through and it's, uh, and it's metallic colored and very insubstantial. And it's almost like a chain link fence. So there's now certain parts of the wall that have that section. But right next to them is all the material that Trump's bought that they didn't want to use just because Trump had mm -hmm. his fingerprints on it. And, you know, I don't care what you think about Trump, okay, but that is not good for our country. That's not a good choice. And then... This wall goes, I think, 10 feet or 12 feet underground. And because one of the big problems is they're now using fracking drilling, drilling equipment, horizontal drilling equipment that was developed for the fracking industry to put these tubes underground that have um, like the, the little mail, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the little mail cargo carriers in them that they fill with fentanyl and then they send it through that tube to the other side. Oh, well, they're putting horizontal drilling material, you know, pipes under the for that are designed for the fracking industry under the wall, and then you know it can come up in a. In one case, it was a uh, it was a fast food chicken place where they were you know they were unloading the fentanyl on the other side of the wall that we went and saw. 
And, um, but you need a deep wall to prevent that. And they don't, uh, and the, the wall that, the, the new wall that my orcas put in doesn't go underground. It stops the ground level. So it's easy to cut, it's easy to get through, it's easy to penetrate. And it was just political pettiness. And that, um, you know, is distressing that there's people in, in public office are doing that. And I was very outspoken criticizing, um, you know, uh, Mr. Mayorkas for Secretary Mayorkas for that decision. And I don't know whether that contributed to his decision not to give me Secret Service protection. I have no idea, but it's it occurred to me. So you think that if you can, if if you became president and you locked down the board, well, I don't understand yeah. why Joe Biden's not doing it then. But that would stop the cartels from yeah, but going before, out and bringing people from China. It, yes, because. And then you detain people who come across and don't release them into the United States, which is what we have the power to do and what we were doing before. And and that reduced the, you know, the crossings at this particular border crossing. I think they were getting like 10 people a day instead of and now instead of 300. Now they're getting 300 a day. Yeah, because the Biden administration oh, is manageable. And then, you know, there's a couple of other things you do and that you, you know, there's a bunch of other things you do. They all need to be done. But, you know, there there are borders like this all over the world. You know, nobody gets, you know, there's there's African borders that the Israelis have built, you know, fences for that nobody gets through. So there's ways to do it. Um, you know, and I'm not saying that we should adopt those, uh, you know, those stratagems. But, you know, there's ways to do it, where you, in, which we have to do. You can't, we can't let this continue. And, you know, that will be one of my first priorities when I get in there is just is, you know, doing what the Border Patrol is pleading with us to do, which is to allow them to do their jobs. I think if people knew that story, that it was cartels sending TikTok videos uh, so, and that they were and they're coming in on buses, they drive them right to the wall. They're, I think people would go nuts if they knew that. I, I, It makes me nuts when I heard you say it the first time on that News Nation. I couldn't believe it. I think everybody in the crowd was stunned, too, when they heard you tell that story about what you found out in those three days at the border. <laughs> well, I told I, I think I said that night it took me three days to really comprehend how mm -hmm. insane it was because I we had to go to these processing centers and watch what was happening. And, you know, meeting parents who had lost their kids coming across and who were pleading with us, can you help me find my child? Oh my you, God. you think about how, you know, I have seven children and, uh, you know, my, my heart was breaking. And yeah. that's what we're doing down there. You know, people who think that we're doing being kind, they don't know. They have no clue what's happening down there.